Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're taking a look today at a mini PC alternative from Dell. This is their Inspiron i3252, and it's a little bit bigger than some of the mini PCs we've looked at, but powered by uh, what is essentially the same chipset. So it's got a Pentium N3700 chip on board that's a Brasswell chip, a mobile processor that we've seen on a lot of laptops and uh, some of those little PCs we get from China from time to time. Uh, but this is in a much bigger form factor because it has a lot more storage, one terabyte, more RAM to start with, four gigabytes, and you have some expandability options on both the storage and the RAM. Uh, so that's why you've got a slightly bigger case here. And of course, you have an optical drive here, a DVD burner that comes with it as well. So if you have been uh, looking for something that can store all your photos and take uh, CDs and DVDs, uh, this one might be worth considering over a cheaper mini PC because it has the storage and it has the optical drive too. Now, I should mention in the interest of full disclosure that this came in through the Amazon Vine program free of charge. However, I've had no direct communication with Dell or Amazon. Nobody is paying for this review. No one is reviewing this video before it is posted, and that means all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into how all of this works, and we'll uh, dissect it a bit as well. So uh, you've got the Pentium N3700 in here, four gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte spinning hard drive, and that DVD burner, uh, 350 bucks as configured. There's also 2.4 gigahertz wireless N, no wireless AC on this particular model. Uh, there's a i3 version of this available for an extra 50 bucks or so. It's 389, so $40 more. Uh, that one might might be worth taking a look at just to get a little bit more performance out of it because this will, as you'll see in a few minutes, perform about where some of those cheap PCs perform, uh, not quite where perhaps uh, that i3 might for just a little bit more money. So this is what you got on the front here. You've got the optical drive, an SD card reader. You have a headphone microphone jack there, two USB 3.0 ports on that side. On the back here, and again, this is a pretty big case, uh, you have your audio inputs and outputs there, so you have some additional audio input options. VGA out, HDMI out, four USB uh, 2.0 slots, a gigabit ethernet port, and this is where the power adapter goes. So normally these, uh, these kind of computers, even these small desktops, have a big power supply inside with a fan blowing and everything. Uh, this one doesn't, it just has a little uh, power brick here that you normally would see on a laptop or something because uh, this is running with a mobile processor that uh, isn't all that fast and doesn't need all that much power to operate. Now there's two screws here in the back that I've already removed so we can uh, just pop the lid on this guy here and see what is inside. So we'll switch over to my other camera here try to get a good angle on this thing without dropping it off the side of my desk. So uh, this is where that Pentium processor is located. It does not look like I can take it off the board. So I think you're gonna be stuck with whatever is in there, at least on this version. Uh, you can see how much extra room is in this case because there's no power supply, the motherboard is rather small, and there's no expansion slots for putting in cards and graphics processors and that sort of thing. Uh, but you can replace the RAM. So the four gigs of RAM that comes with this one is in that slot there. Uh, costs, uh, I don't know what it costs to go to eight gigs, but it isn't all that much, maybe another 30 or $40 or so. I'm sure you can find uh, some RAM out there to do that. It's DDR3 RAM. Uh, and the hard drive and optical drive are in this bay over here. Let's see if I can get a better angle on it there. So that's where they plug in. So kind of slimline a uh, hard drive and optical drive. But you can always just pop out that hard drive and put in a solid state disk. Unfortunately, on the motherboard here, there is only two slots for uh, your SATA drive. So you'll have to decide whether or not you want uh, the optical drive if you want to take uh, the, you know, add another hard drive in addition to the one that's there. But you can always swap out one and replace it with another. But I do like the fact that this does come with a terabyte, uh, even though it's a spinning hard drive and not all that fast, and it's a little bit of a noisy hard drive also. Uh, it is a 7200 RPM drive as well. Uh, but it does, you know, does give you the storage you might need for putting music and photos and all that kind of stuff. Because a lot of times people write to me after buying one of these mini PCs with a little bit of buyer's remorse because their PC only comes with 32 gigs or so and they can't install many games. They can't really do much with it. Uh, this one has a lot of storage built in and you can uh, find some ways to expand that storage later without having to plug in external drives and whatnot. So nice to have a little bit of expandability on there. And I'm sure they're using this case for other uh, PCs that have a little bit more robust expansion, which is why there's so much empty room in this thing. But it really is pretty quiet when it's operating minus that hard drive. So speaking of operation, let's get this thing booted up and see how it performs. All right, so we've got everything booted up here. Now, one of the things you're gonna notice when you first turn it on is that it does take a little bit longer to boot up, and that is because uh, this has a mechanical hard drive built into it, not a solid state drive. So mechanical drives have a little bit more latency in that it takes them a little bit longer to get at the data that it needs to uh, load up your particular operating system or application. So solid state drives often perform faster. So uh, we'll see a little bit of a downgrade in performance here due to that. I uh, won't be all that noticeable everywhere, but I think if you're used to a solid state drive powered computer, this will certainly 
certainly uh, feel a little bit slower to you. I do have one of my own uh, little external SSDs installed right now just because I keep a lot of the applications that I use to benchmark on this drive for uh, very quick and easy testing here in the studio. So I'm going to pull up my full screen view here. I'm going to load up the Edge browser. We're going to go over to my YouTube channel real fast and see how well it can do a web page as well as a web page containing some auto playing video too so we can get the best of all worlds here. So we've got uh, my video file already uh, coming to life there and we've got this on a, a 1080p playback right now as well. So uh, decent performance in part with what I've seen for uh, other computers powered by the same processor. So not too bad there. I'll go into a uh, full screen mode here so you can just see if it's able to keep up with that. I haven't noticed any drop frames in my testing on the 1080p video either over the web. So I think for Netflix and YouTube and all the things that people like to do, uh, watching videos on their computer, it should do uh, pretty well at that. I'm also going to look at a 4K video file on my YouTube channel as well. Now, this is not hooked up to a 4K monitor right now, but this will give you an idea as to uh, how well it can play back 4K content because what it has to do is essentially down convert uh, this video to the uh, screen size that we're currently operating at. And this is something that uh, a lot of these mini PCs are actually able to do pretty well these days, at least in the Edge browser, uh, not so much on Google Chrome due to the uh, lack of some optimizations that they haven't put into place yet. So right now we're just kind of dealing with the Wi-Fi on here. This is a wireless N uh, connection and maybe YouTube's a little bogged down at the moment, but uh, when things have been playing back in prior testing, it's been working pretty well. I'm not seeing any drop frames as we're playing back here either. So you get a few drop frames at the outset and then uh, it plays back pretty smoothly as the rest of it goes, uh, provided your bandwidth is keeping up, which it isn't on my computer at the moment, but I can assure you in prior testing, uh, it was working pretty well. And on the Octane benchmark test, we get a score of 8,446 and that test looks at uh, how efficiently and how well this computer can do all the things that the web requires, like Java script and HTML rendering and all those sorts of things. And it uh, pretty much puts it right in line with where I've seen other mini PCs and low end laptops fall in line because uh, this is running with the same processor that we've seen in many of those PCs. So good performance where I expect it to be. Uh, nothing that's going to knock your socks off. But if you want something a little bit faster for web browsing, especially if you're doing uh, some more higher end tasks than the i3 version, which just costs a little bit more, uh, might be worth looking at to get a little bit better performance out of this same form factor. So not bad, especially if you're doing work and all that kind of stuff. And speaking of work, uh, Microsoft Word works pretty well on here too. So we've got our newsletter template uh, pulled up here. I can scroll through and see how things render as we're moving around the page here. So uh, where I've seen pretty much other uh, low-end mini PC chips perform here, nothing crazily fast, but uh, fast enough for doing what you need to do. And you can uh, move things around and adjust text on the screen here. And I think you'll have a pretty good uh, experience overall doing some work on it. So let's take a look now at some gaming. Not much of a gaming machine, but it will uh, play a few games. We'll take a look at Minecraft and then look at some benchmarks too. And here we are playing Minecraft. We're getting some decent performance out of it actually, around anywhere from 30 to 40 frames per second, sometimes a little bit more, which isn't bad at all. Uh, we do have the Optifine plugin installed, which gives us a little bit of a performance boost uh, over what we might normally see from a vanilla Minecraft installation. This is the original Java version. The Windows 10 version will probably run a little bit better than this one will, so not bad there. And on the 3D Mark CloudGate test, we get a score of 2,121, uh, which is actually faster than the HP Pavilion X360, which is the uh, uh, running the same processor that this desktop computer from Dell has, that Pentium N3700. So it's a little bit faster than that one, uh, but not as fast as the Voyo uh, that we looked at a couple of weeks ago, which is a Chinese-made computer uh, running with the Atom X7 chips. So that one is slightly faster, may not be all that noticeably faster, but that one does run a little bit better than this one does. But uh, this one has a larger case, expandability, and a lot more storage and RAM uh, that you can put into it if you wish. So this one has a little bit more flexibility on the expansion side. And these really aren't you know, geared for gaming, but they can play some games that you're seeing here. Uh, things like uh, Counter-Strike should run okay if you turn it down to 720p and adjust a lot of its settings down a little bit as well. Uh, so a lot of the older games will run great. The new ones like Grand Theft Auto V and The Division, I uh, wouldn't even try it. It's not going to run too well on here, if at all. Uh, so you really want to stick to some older stuff and uh, more casual games. All right, so let's take a look at some high bitrate video files right now. We've got a Blu-ray MKV file untouched from the original disc that is streaming off of my solid state drive via USB 3 to VLC see right now. I'm not seeing any drop frames or any performance issues whatsoever. So it does feel like this is a, a decent movie watching device as well. So you shouldn't have any issues with uh, your higher bitrate movie files. So not a bad little computer actually and a nice alternative to what you might see with other mini PCs, uh, primarily because this one comes with more RAM and more storage off the bat. I get emails from so many people about just how little storage there is on these mini PCs. Isn't there something that has more? Uh, well, this one kind of does. You have that uh, terabyte hard drive. You've got all the RAM available. It's expanded 
expandable. You could swap the spinning drive out for an SSD if you want. And you have some other options too when you first buy it, like maybe going to that i3 processor versus the other. But at $350, it's not a bad price for what you're getting here. So if you are looking for uh, something maybe to use as a little server for your photos and things, uh, this will probably do a pretty nice job of being able to store everything uh, and give you some room to expand to larger hard drives down the road. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.